If you feed raw dog food to your dog and you've always wondered how to train with it, this is the video for you. You may or may not know it, but I actually harvest and make and train all of my own, with all of my own dog food. And it's seasonal and it changes. So in this video, I'm gonna be using salmon. I'm gonna show you start to finish right from the, from the beginning right to the end of how I process it and how I train with it. And I'll also give you some tips if you're on a time crunch. Oh, tonight's supper for the puppies. Salmon! <laughs> and for the family. Always cut towards your chum, never cut towards your thumb. I better get my hand over the way, especially with a trigger. Right. That's mine. Now you see this? I'll cut that out. This is fresh salmon, Atlantic salmon. It is firm. That can go to the dogs. This is exactly. This is what my dogs eat. Everybody overthinks dog food. This right here, minus the guts. Ooh, dogs love that. This is for me, this is for the dogs. I'll smoke that, give it away. Except for this stuff right here. See that little white stuff there? Good look. Someday you say, what do you feed your dogs, Duke, when you're training there? And it's that pink stuff. This is it. <laughs> Redneck. Oh, it's a hose. I'm a hoser. There you go. Before you run out and get some salmon to feed your dog, and before we get into the training aspect, I want you to know a couple of very important notes. In the Pacific Northwest, somewhere between California and Alaska, say, there's a parasite that the salmon can have, which carries a bacteria known as Neorichetsia helminthinca. Hopefully I pronounced that properly. Say that 10 times over. So to be careful for this type of thing, I freeze all of my dog's food, whether it's red meat or fish, for about three weeks before I feed it to them. And keep in mind, salmon is a part of a seasonal diet. So my dogs don't eat salmon day in, day out, day in, day out. They eat all kinds of different proteins. Uh, on a somewhat regular basis, I mix it up. And it also depends on the season. So to avoid salmon poisoning disease, where your dog can get sick or die, just take note of what I'm teaching you here and be really knowledgeable of where your fish is coming from. And if you freeze it for a few weeks prior to, you should be okay. If this is a concern or if you're in the Pacific Northwest, then just consider feeding a different type of protein in your raw, but you can still train the same way I train that I'm about to show you. Okay, so a lot of people say, Duke, I feed raw. I don't have a lot of time to get all that amount of raw food into that great big dog. Train two minutes to five minutes. I'm gonna show you a way that you don't even have to have a treat pouch or a training vest. And then I'll show you a way you can use, so it's an indirect reward is what it's called, okay? Um, in order for it to work, your dog has to understand a behavior mark, a release mark. I explain that into my courses, but basically a clicker and the dog is released and they're looking for the food. That is not on you, it's indirect. I'll show you. Um, so what I did is I just chunked up some of the, some of the salmon into chunks. So I'm just gonna utilize these for uh, the reward. Now, uh, for those of you who are in a time and say, Duke, I don't have any time. I got a, a big sloppy bunch of raw. How do I feed? I'm going to show you. You're going to like it. <clears throat> you can have the dish um, there, and I can end it with the dish, right? But I'm going to use these as reinforcement along the way. End it with this. Anyway, you'll see. So I also use a freeze-dried raw. I use hurrah. And I also put a supplementation in it, so I will feed a little bit from a dish when I'm mixing sort of supplementation. Uh, the reason I keep the pellets there is because uh, when I'm on the road, this is great to train with, I don't take a while with me, I have pura with me. Um, 
and it's perfect size to train. Look at the size of that stuff. So it's great. So I keep it in there just so there's some consistency there. So when you'll see how I get to train my dogs with raw, we got Cole here. Extra collar on, buddy. Oh. There we go. And you'll get to see how he does a little work. Um, I'm not going to use a treat pouch or anything. I'm just going to use what's on the table, okay? So, and then I'll finish it with this. There. Hey, Cole. <clears throat> um, what can we work on, Cole? Oh my gracious. All right, heel. And I have no food on me at all. All right, do you hear the clicker? I release him, oh, he was looking at me. Maybe that's a behavior you want. You can now go to the table, to your dish, right? And you can either give it to the dog like that, or you can throw it. Ask the dog to do things they already know. Heel, right side, oh boy. And then I can release him. I go over to the table. If I'm in the house, Feed them just like that with the glove, okay? Now, the food is over there. If your dog is focusing on the food over there all the time, they'll never get it, okay? It's kind of like if I hold the food in my hand, right? he knows a the lure, there's a lure, right? But he also knows. Look to me in order to get that without me sticking it in my face. It's an indirect way, so I think it's the most powerful way to train is to get your dog to learn to do behaviors when you don't have any food on you. Super powerful. So if I told him, down, really fast, I released him, that told him, okay, you can have your food. Now, if I'm outside like I am right now, I could throw it, he runs away, a little exercise, makes it a little bit more fun, We're playing with our food. Hey, people told me for years when I was a kid, don't play with your food. I became a professional trainer so I could play with my food. Right? Play with my dogs. So you could do a lot of things. You could say down and heel, you know, at right side. <laughs> Boy, and heel. Awesome job. And then break or release, whatever you want to clicker, verbal, it doesn't matter. And then he's released and away he goes. So this is how I will train all of a sudden. Let's say I'm training for like two to five minutes, okay? And uh, I'm almost done with that or I'm late for work. Okay, <clears throat> you can have him sit there, do little things, you know, do some behaviors. This is indirect. It can be on the table or it can be over there. That's much more challenging for him. Ask for heel. What a good boy. And he's going to heel and want to stare at the food. But I ask for heel. And now this helps him learn looking at me. As soon as he looks to me, boom, you can go get it now. I'll release him to that. He's looking at me. I have nothing on me. Okay. And what's neat about this is it's using the brain and I don't have to train more than five minutes with, it, it, they don't need that much more. If you do that a few times a day, that's awesome. But once a day, two to five minutes. So I can give, I can chunk up the fish. Uh, I can use it indirect. And now I do supplement, you know, I'm not just gonna give them just the meat. So I have supplementation there um, at xdog.com. You can check that stuff out. I'll put some links in the description. But yeah, you chunk it up. Do a little training with it, fun, engagement, whatever it is. Uh, having no food on you, like I said, is really powerful. Indirect reward, really powerful. And Cole, that's got Cole's approval. Cole approves. <laughs> Another thing you can do if you're into luring, okay, <laughs> pretty powerful. If you're into luring, I want to show you something that's pretty neat. Teach the dog to ignore it also in order to get it. If I have the food on me, um, the direct would be me giving it to the dog using this as a bribe. I don't suggest doing it. You can use definitely the food as lures. Absolutely, phase away with that. So let's say if I have a dog in a position, whether it's this, the left side, which is the heel position or right side, right? Notice I don't have the lure over here. He just flips over. I have it still right here. This is no longer luring if he's doing it on his own. Heel. Oh boy. Down. Down. Good boy. Right side. Good boy. Okay. And now I can release with your, you either use a clicker, it would be, or you'd use a verbal. It goes there. Right side. Mm. Heel. Oh boy. Click. 
and then he's released and he's rewarded. So you can have a little bit on you, that's fine. If you're luring, make sure he also works in order to get that, but not as a lure, you get a phase away. All right, so I hope you got great value from that video, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as Cole and I did. <laughs> I know Cole definitely did. If you did, we'd really appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up and subscribed, even shared it to someone who you may find it of value. Below, I will leave a list of the supplementation that I give, Cole, and you'll see that in the description box. If you're looking for a program that will move you forward with more breakthroughs, with more success at a faster rate, or some coaching for either you and your dog, <laughs> I combine both. I'm actually a certified professional dog trainer and high performance coach. Head on over to dukeferguson.com or unleashedpotential.ca. I've got a lot of courses and services that will help you. You see, Unleashed Potential is more than just dog training. We are personal development for you and your dog's overall life for the long term. Thank you.